opinion of the U.S. has dramatically improved since Biden replaced Trump. I think that matters. I, I'm not an isolationist. So I think it's important that other countries respect the office. David Pakman recently joined Patrick Bet David on the PBD podcast for a pretty intense debate. Pakman did a great job dismantling some of the MAGA arguments from Bet David using solid facts. And you'll notice a big difference in their debate styles. In this video, we'll check out some of the key moments and see how they went head to head. I'll share my thoughts throughout as we break it down. So let's dive in and see how it all played out. To the presidency and under Trump, it was a joke, you know, P literally laughed at at the UN, goes to India, mispronounces 10 Indian names and the crowd is just leaving. It, it's a, it was a humiliation everywhere he went. So I think that's a great, it's like a soft thing that I think is really good. So the, the fact that we're no longer feared is a good thing. I don't know where you're getting that we are no longer feared. So you think people fear Biden? W what I'm asking you is where, what data do you have that we are no longer feared? Well, that's not a, that's, what data is not uh, any data to give. I mean, during- well, Then how do you know it is Well, no, but, but during, Bi during Biden is when Russia felt comfortable bullying Ukraine. During Biden is, uh, even if you look at Afghanistan on the way we left, people on the left were not happy by the way we left Afghanistan. Which people? Even 82 billion, I can give you a lot of different names. Like uh, who? CIA, uh, who's the CIA guy that we had here who was on- uh, Philip Mudd? Z with a Z, what's his name? S uh, um, Matt Zeller. Matt Zeller. Yeah. A quick point about Afghanistan. Many right wing commentators, including Patrick Bet David, didn't seem to express much concern over the loss of lives, the injuries to American soldiers, or the trillions of dollars spent during the war. It only became a major issue for them when Biden decided to withdraw. This shift in concern feels a bit disingenuous, and it's worth noting that the situation was a long standing issue, not something that just emerged with the withdrawal. No, but there's a lot of them though. If I, if I actually, if I, if I actually yeah. pull it up and if, if I if I do the Google search yeah. on it, I'll find plenty of names from their own site. Let's do it. That's fine. But I think one important thing to back up is you first kind of gave me what's not really a very fair question. You go, are you not worried that the U.S. is no longer feared? So, so you're saying they they don't fear? You. Hold, but hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish my yeah. response. Okay. Yeah. You first presented to me, and these are a lot of conversations go like this. You present to me. Is it not a concern to me that the U.S. is no longer feared? And I said, well, where are you getting that? Where, where's the data? You go, oh, there is no data. So where, let's first start with- No, no the, what I know, said is it's, it's not the, the fear. I didn't say there's no data. You can't, you can't you pull data, no data, meaning you can't find data on fear. fear then how is, do you know that that's Fear the case? is action. Fear is action. Did, did, during, uh, did during Trump, Russia attack Ukraine? S no, that's did, not- did, yeah. What happened with Palestine and Israel? What happened? Yeah, what happen? happened? They came together after 20 some years. What? What are you talking about when you say what? Are what are you talking about? <laughs> Hold on. Well, he moved the capital to Jerusalem, is what you're saying. So let's I talk about I don't know if there's that. been peace let's in the Middle East or anything like that. Has there been any progress on peace? Very limited. Did moving the cap, did move, it wasn't the capital, did moving the embassy. The embassy, Hold correct. On a correct. Let me ask the question. Did moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem get us closer to peace or did it get us further, further away? Do either of you guys know? I don't know if you've studied this issue. There's I have arguments some. on both end, but it has not led to peace and prosperity in Palestine, correct? Did Trump promise, this, this is a very critical, clear question. Did Trump promise that Jared Kushner, Kushner. would solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict during the first term? That's now, before, that's just overreach. a yes, no. Did he, did he promise it? I don't know if he promised it or promises made, promises kept. He was assigned to that duty. And did it happen? Did What happened? Did Jared negotiate no peace. but i don't think anybody believed that peace was happening in so the it's East. okay for him to make promises but, but that are obvious but, lies? But, but make the but a... make the make the argument go yeah. back to the argument about the fact that america on all polls today is would you say liked what was the word you used so i i think the really important thing when we talk about this is we talk mm -hmm. about what we can measure so the gallup polling that has been done so you trust polls Oh, come on. Where are we going to get the data from? Are we just going to rely on Patrick Bet David's feelings about how other countries view the United States, or are we going to look at actual polling to see what our allies think? Under Trump, many of our allies were uncertain about what he would do next, which is a risky situation when dealing with treaties and international agreements. For example, 
if Germany makes a treaty with the Biden administration, they don't know if someone like Trump could come back into office and undo it. Lots because I, I trust certain polls, too, but I'm saying so you trust polls. If you say, do I trust a Rasmussen Republican primary poll 18 months before an election? I would say that's a, that's not very valuable. I don't right. think that's valuable. The Gallup public opinion sentiment poll that has been done over many, many presidents in the same way. I think that that's a pretty good poll just to give a sense of how the world feels about the American president. I have no reason to distrust that. There are other polls where I would have a specific reason to distrust, but we're kind of going like 10, 10 tangents here. I think if we want to talk about, am I upset that the U.S. isn't feared? Since you brought that question forward, the appropriate thing would be for you to give me the data. But no, for, go, go back to what you but, said. You said U.S. is what? You said you like the fact that U.S. is liked more today under Biden? No, I didn't use that term. What was the term you used? If you don't Globally, mind saying it again. On average, yeah. countries respect the U.S. more now that Biden is president. And, and you, Trump you is value president. that. I think it's important because okay. I, and I, can I tell you why? Sure. I think it's important because between trade and globalization mm -hmm. and problems we deal with that don't respect the borders of countries, it's important to be, again, it's not about liked, it's not about, it's to be respected globally. I do think that that actually- So, so why point. do you think they didn't why like or respect other Trump? countries to respect us? Under Donald Trump, the U.S. faced a lot of disrespect internationally, despite Trump claiming that other countries were laughing at us. The reality is, they were laughing at him and his followers. It's surprising that someone like Patrick Bet David wouldn't see that, but it seems like he's missing the bigger picture. <laughs> tell me. The, the guy's a joke. He is? Yeah. Okay, tell us why. And, Bi and Biden's not a joke. Well, we can, we can talk about Biden. Oh, because Biden's like the goat and, no, 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 and Trump's no. the and of course, Patrick Bet David goes straight into what aboutism? If you criticize Donald Trump, it automatically means in his eyes that you must love Joe Biden. For Patrick Bet David and MAGA supporters, it feels more like team sports. They'll support their side no matter what and hate the other team rather than focusing on the actual issues. It's almost like Patrick Bet David isn't thinking like an adult, but more like a child in this regard. No, 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 no. Okay, so, I, why, I'm so tell us about, why he's a joke. But I think it's important to say, are we talking about Trump or are we talking about Biden? No, we no. Can talk so, about so both, identify let's both. talk about them one at a time. S stay on Trump. Okay, stay on Trump fair. when he says he's a joke. Tell okay. us why you think he's a joke. Um, promises made that were not kept that he told us he was going to achieve for us. Let's look at some of them. I'm going to get rid of Ob Obamacare and replace it with his word, a beautiful replacement where everyone will have care and it's going to be affordable. Okay, just flat out didn't happen. The one proposal that Republicans made would have led to 24 to 32 million people losing health care. I consider that a failure. I don't think Obamacare is perfect, but it's better than the think Trump thing Trump said he was going to bring us. That was, that was a, just a failure. Two, build a wall across the entire US-Mexico border, which Mexico is going to pay for. It's not even worth having a conversation. I mean, just a joke. Of course, of course, completely didn't happen. Solve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. No progress made. In fact, to be honest, and this is, you know, if we want to delve into that, moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem got us further from that because it's seen as a sort of um, uh, a taunting measure, if you understand the internal politics of what's, what's going on there. Um, was going to, you know, the, the made some space travel promises. I mean, we could, I can't think of promises he made that he did keep. Other if you enjoy this type of content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out a ton. The, the, he was going to do tax reform and he did tax reform. So as a policy matter, a complete and total failure. I do think maybe the First Step Act on criminal justice reform did some good things. I'm, I'm sort of glad to, to give him credit on that. Um, but so, you know, on policy, failure. And then, you know, on rhetoric, we could spend three hours just looking at quotes. If, if you know? so, so I'm curious to see exactly how you think now. So yeah. if, if, if COVID doesn't happen, does he get reelected? Yes. Why? Well, because his followers don't care about policy. Uh, I interview them all the time and I say- his followers don't care about policy. They don't care about achievements. They care about Hillary bad, Hillary yeah. Marxist, Hillary socialist. 
Did I say that? No, I'm asking you. Oh, no, uh, I don't think Hillary was a good candidate and she's she's to my right. Um, no, I don't think Hillary's good, but I thought she was better than Trump. She's to your right. She's to my right. Yeah, Hillary so she'd is a be very a moderate conservative Democrat she, yeah, in your world. Yeah, yeah. Got it. I mean, give me a left wing Hillary policy, like a really left wing Hillary policy. Of course, because Patrick Bet David isn't someone who engages with facts, it's all about his personal feelings and opinions. But but it's not the point. But you're saying you would much rather have a Hillary than a Trump. I would rather. Okay, so go back. To, <laughs> much rather. So, I don't know. So so go back to he gets reelected. Why? Because his uh, uh, voters could care less about policies. They That's what you're saying. Care less. Fine, no problem. So. But we both know that it's not the right that elects him, and it's not the left that elects whoever on the left. It's whoever's in the middle, the, the 8 to 12 percent that kind of says, you know what, I'm going to go this side, you know, this time around, or versus more people come out for, you know, their candidate, meaning a lot not of people really would true. come out for Obama. Okay, so explain yourself. The, the, what, it, what it actually more depends on is who chooses to go out and vote. It's less about, you know, there's, there's often this idea in politics, and there's lots of people who are really good on this issue that you could talk to, Rachel Bittekoffer, and even Frank Luntz, even though he's partisan, I think he would concede this as well. He's the on the right. The pollster, you mean, Frank Luntz, yes. yeah. The idea of the swing independent voter that sometimes on, on presidential elections will vote for a Republican and sometimes a Democrat, very, very small percentage of people. More common is that a candidate either activates people to vote or those same people just stay home. In the US, we have an embarrassingly low voter voter turnout. It's between usually, usually 52 and 60%, I think. Mm -hmm. So almost half the electorate isn't even voting. It's less about people who vote one way and then another way. It's more about people who say, I'm just gonna stay home versus I'm going to go out and vote. If they vote, it's clear. It, so you're saying that the middle voter doesn't matter at all? No, I didn't say that. So what are you saying? Then? I said they matter much less than who who is partisan chooses to vote. But it's to fair home. to say that, okay, if, if he continues, so if he continues and there's no COVID, he would get reelected. Do you think, the, let's specifically target the middle. Forget the people on the side that would show up. Okay? Well, but why? That seems, That's the question I want to do with you right now. So if we, if we specifically... Focus on the middle. Would the middle, the independent, the libertarians, would they have chosen to stick with Trump or would most have wanted to replace him with somebody else? It's a polling question. I don't have the data. Well, you're the poll guy. That's so what I'm asking you. I, I don't have the data in front okay, of me. Okay, I'd be yeah. curious to know. So you're, but, but you're also correcting me to say that's not true. That's the middle and the independents that, that didn't elect him. You're saying it's who showed up that elected him. As a general concept, right. elections swing less based on independents who sometimes vote Republican and Democrat, that's a small factor. A bigger factor is, are voters activated by their candidate or are they deactivated where they go, I don't like this person, but I'm definitely not voting for that one, I'll stay home. So Isn't it a bit of both? It's pretty simple. Patrick Bet David seems fixated on the people in the middle, but David Pakman points out that statistically, the middle may not matter as much as Bet David thinks. I found it interesting when Patrick said libertarians are the middle when they are often more aligned with right wing views. I agree with Pacman that if Trump had presented wearing a mask as something strong and masculine, his base would have likely followed. And he may have even won the election. However, Trump's refusal to act presidential hurt him in the end. Regarding the debate between David Pacman, Patrick Bet David, and co host Adam, I think Adam comes across as more reasonable and sharper than Patrick. As usual, Pacman clearly breaks down his points and handles the debate well. What do you think? Did Patrick bet David hold his own, or did David Pacman come out on top in this debate? Let me know in the comments. If you're interested in watching the full debate, it's available on Patrick Bet David's Valuetainment channel, and it's about 35 minutes long. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My channel is growing quickly, and I want to continue bringing you more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.